whatever you know it's not you have uh, this is just a between the previous session and the present session and also ice breaking session participated enthusiastically also now let me look at the questions so functions of nac assessment and accreditation i think you are all able to see this nac is considered about quality in education ssr means self study report number of criteria in quality indicator framework 7 each criteria is further divided into key indicators nac ssr metrics are qualitative and quantitative iiqa is institutional information for quality assessment data submitted for quantitative metrics are subjected to data validation and verification pre qualifier is minimum 30% of quantitative metrics to be valid in dvv iqac means internal quality assurance cell so we have got a brief review you yourself have reviewed about this such uh, nac previous nac uh, i have shared my ppt and i am sure that you are all able to watch this ppt so what made us to move to have this program to learn about this transformation is that in january 2024 you see 28th nac abolishes grading system for higher education institutes this is the news from times of india and in another english newspaper we have seen that nac for change no more grades colleges and universities to get binary multi level accreditation in indian express it was said government plans accreditation system overhaul for higher educational institutions by december this is the news from january 29 2024 so in times of india ugc to introduce rating system for nac accreditation by december january 30th 2024 three days back february 10th 2024 the new indian express has written that major reforms in nac accreditation binary multi levels for institutions grading system to go so with all these uh, we were wondering and we are expecting that there is some change change in the nac system and we know pretty well that we are all in education institutions educational field and change in education is one thing that we are able to predict and we are all teachers your life as a teacher begins the day you realize that you are always a learner and we are ready for adaptability which is one of the traits of the teacher that is adaptability is the simplest secret of secret of survival and 
all the participants are adaptable in nature that's why that's why we are here together now the main objective is proposed framework and its advantages now this is the report given by dr raja krishnan committee transformative reforms for strengthening assessment and accreditation of higher education institutions in india this i took from nac website and plan of the session is i have planned in such a way that first let me give you the introduction of introductory part of this session to move towards the reforms quality assessment to hcis in india quality assessment to hcis in the world global best practices nep hci quality and then as a second part we will come to know new nac framework and its advantages which were covered in 13 points the introduction see here factors influencing the higher levels of education quality are every one of us will agree that it is basic thing is teaching and learning then research and innovation motivated teachers enhancing employability skills equity and societal integration academic ambience commitment to sustainability rather than merely focusing on infrastructure and inputs current systems for approval accreditation and ranking are we know that in the previous session also we have seen that aicte nba nac nirf all these are the systems behind the assessing approval and then ranking of higher education institutions in this you see all are accessing but what is the problem existing problem we are facing i have taken few examples here see aqar so every year from iqac nac coordinator will be submitting aqar in that we will see one small question about enrollment how they ask how nac people will ask so uh did i did i share this just a minute i am trying to share just i'll share the entire screen so that it will be easy for you i think now you are able to see the screen okay so number of programs offered during the year for example look at only uh, only the questions here number of programs so the question they asked is number of programs and total number of students during the year who what are the total number of students during year for example if our college is offering degree three years course then what is the answer for this question first year second year third year running students now that total we will be answering here okay that is about the students students basic information asked by aqr we will take another example nirs first we will be submitting aqr by end of the year december and then and there uh, january or so or most probably uh, nirf also will ask us some data look at the data here they are asking about approved intake so what data we will be collecting from the admission section about the number of students data we will collect and whenever nirf is asked it opens then data capturing system opens then what shall we do we will be collecting information about ug of a particular year pg two years of a particular year here not the total number of students studying there but what is the intake approved intake here and of course here we can use the that previous data but additionally we need this information also okay next point is aisha aisha also asks us certain information that is this blank form i am able to get and i'll show you here what are they asking the questions they are asking are look here total num uh, number of years number of years program details okay what uh, 
who are the students who belongs to general category sc st obc and in general category also how many are from muslim minority other minority pwd and are there any students which are who are of uh, pwd category from sc st this is the data they are asking so from iqac we will be collecting during the same academic year the data from different for different agencies we are collecting data in a different forms and uh, we, you would have faced that comment that the they are kept on asking the data each and every time isn't it so this is the reason why a need a transformation is required why because all are just now i have shown you that nianic aisha here aisha is not mentioned a uh, uh, nac all these are assessing and working towards uh, the quality of hei only but still they are collect collecting the data in different forms at different periods of time uh, uh, a question from participants uh, i have heard that bed how to be assessed so this is the manual for them and in order to increase their score for bed these are the metrics they have to follow okay if you want i can share this this just a point i have included just one hour back next see here that was about the ranking of higher education institutions and then quality assessing at india level national level now take the global level and how our co colleges institutions and universities will be graded quality quality assessed how they are being assessed and you you i think uh, you are able to see this quora quarelli simons this is a global higher education analyst and services provider headquartered in london with offices in europe asia and america and you see this is how qs world university ranking will be given now let me show you how the great top rankings are given to universities at global level qs world university rankings 2023 top global universities so it's just opening top universities see here these are the top universities okay now i will check for india india indian institute of sciences indian institute of technology bombay indian institute of delhi and so on this is the rank we got and this is the overall score remember this rank and score and this is also one of the reasons why there needs a transformation that means we want our institutions our indian institutions to be at global excellence level and rankings released see whenever nirf releases ranks first 100 first 200 like that they will be releasing now we too might have got some score but maybe of some other 2 not 2 under 1 not 1 rank like that but see these are the top most universities which are ranked for arts and humanities engineering and technology life sciences and medicine and so on so here we would like to see our institutions our indian institutions in these global rankings of top 10 so this is also the reason why we need go to for change now what practices they are following global best practices on accreditation so based on this also transformation has been written the committee 3 of ugc has made several committees have been formed that you would have learned earlier na no? following observations after a detailed study and analysis of certain best practices that are followed by accrediting agencies in advanced nations like usa canada europe australia and japan by referring to all these best practices our reforms have been introduced now 
now what were the best practices they follow are first thing is accreditation is mandatory in many countries not only for awarding degrees but also for practicing engineering as a profession but many of our institutions in india are not it went for accreditation because of manual lot of work involved that could be one of the reasons the outcomes are predominantly binary acceptance or different shades of rejections in some cases the accreditation request can be outright rejected or a university can be given more time to comply with the requirements this binary whether accepted see who send papers to reputed journals we would have faced such um, results to us that is accepted or rejected or accepted with minor modifications like that so that is that was how that uh, one of the best practices used at global level institutions next point is student learning outcomes are measured by the perusal of students exam scripts not only that but the difficulty of questions and grades student interviews in the on site assessment are also used to calibrate learning outcomes these many factors they will consider in order to analyze student learning outcomes accreditation agencies base their assessment of student and faculty satisfaction using surveys to ensure their veracity interviews are often conducted on an anonymous basis without any interference from the universities so next the forms are very brief and simple all important documents such as the details of facilities faculty profiles student strength at different levels curricular teaching plans lectures and assignments or in the public domain at all points of time with the strictest adherence to compliance norms and stringent action against errant institutions they should not give any erroneous data public display of learning outcomes for stakeholder independent assessment and in a regular practice the accreditation fee is fairly high when compared to india but the level of engagement and mentoring is fairly mature and scientific at all stages pre during post accreditation process so this is churned churned these global practices are churned and see these are the practices followed at global level now still hcis are operating without nac accreditation in india these many at least the 695 universities over these many across the country are operating without nac accreditation the data was shared by union minister of state for education subhas sarkar in response to your written question in lok sabha so this is the source of that now major reforms in accreditation of higher education institutions that pre press release was on 27th january 2024 and nep hei accreditation that was interlinked the indian higher education system is transforming rapidly through the implementation of nac national educational policy accreditation and ranking is an integral part of the transformation of higher education in india and present accreditation system versus npes vision how how it was there so present accreditation system is it is score based just now you have seen cgpa calculation like that 3 point something is a plus grade like that multiple grade accreditation 8 point grade accreditation was there but nep 2020 vision was to see binary accreditation whether accredited or not so that is its vision portal self disclosure public self disclosure this means that see where can we look at the data in the nac portal in our website portal here portal self disclosure is the present accreditation system but in nep 2020 vision public self disclosure is expected our data our institution data is public self disclosure is expected and single accreditation institutions here approved accreditation institutions are the vision of nep 2020 here one size fits all model of course you may think that university is given separate ssr and then affiliated colleges are given separate ssr and autonomous colleges are 
giving separate as a sir but with minor changes sir. so university type based process they are following and here input process limited outcome approach is the present accreditation system majorly nep 2020 vision is focusing on outcome based approach generic policy benefits uh, as an incentive for accreditation but here empirical policy benefits to motivate accreditation so this is the present accreditation system and the vision of nep 2020 and we will be seeing what strategy is included followed in order to achieve nep 2020 consistent with the vision of nep 2020 adopt a right away a simple trust based credible objective and rationalized system is required now for approval accreditation and ranking of heis with a verifiable and secured centralized database technology driven modern systems but they are because they are unbiased that could replace or minimize manual involvement mentoring and incentivizing schemes for raising their participation as well as accreditation levels towards eminence significance and global acclaim <coughs> and here NEP implementation plans and action items for Amrit Call by Professor P G Sita Raman, Chairman of I A I C T E. This was given on 25th November 2023 itself. The vision of Amrit Call includes education in mother tongue, enhancing youth employability, and so on. So they have their own vision in NEP implementation. that could be so nep has one vision aict is working and uh, nac ugc every has every scheme agency is working towards uh, acquiring quality itself but they all to be brought into a single path so amrit kal what does it mean here origin of the term amrit kal can be traced back to vedic astrology where it denotes a crucial period during which gates to greater pleasure and prosperity open for humans angels and other creatures it signifies an auspicious time to initiate new endeavors and we are in amrit kal where we are moving towards a very beautiful new transformation of nac so all these whichever i have told predatory part made us to go for transformation just a minute Uh, if participants have any doubts till now you can ask me now or i shall proceed to what part so, can i proposed nac frame transformative reforms proposed for india's hei approval accreditation and ranking system conforming to nep 2020 new frame introduction is this a set of transformative reforms have been proposed to strengthen the periodic approval assessment and accreditation and ranking of all heis in india in major development the ministry of education government of india constituted an overarching committee with dr k radhakrishnan former chairman of isro and chairperson standing committee of iit council as chairman in november 2022 to propose transformative reforms for strengthening assessment and accreditation of higher education institutions in india now the preliminary committee was placed on the government of india's website for public consultation hmm samjhun de to mag leun gaya the final report baka kal apan ek letter ghetle several feedback received from stakeholders was presented to the honorable minister of education government of india sri dharmendra pradhan on 16th january 2024 which has been accepted by the minister now this is how it was introduced the methodologies and formats are being redesigned based on recommendations of dr radhakrishnan committee report and the same shall also be reflected in the data collection 
and validation process using one data, one nation, one data platform, making the system friendly, easy, and smooth. Now, major reforms, press note, look at this, major reforms in accreditation of higher education institution. This is the press note release. This is part. Now, 13 points of proposed framework we will see in detail with advantages. First point is, Transition from the present eight point grading system. What are those eight points? D, C, D, D plus, B plus, A, A plus, A plus plus. All these will consider eight point grading system. From that grading system, we are transitioning towards adapted binary accreditation, means either accredited or non accredited. And in this also, still we have. In awaiting accredited for those who are close to the threshold level and not accredited for those who are far below the standards or accreditation. This threshold level and these standards are yet to be released. So accredited, binary accredited, envisioned in any and adapted binary accreditation proposed by this committee. So we have seen earlier what was the vision of NEP 2020 and that is being adopted here by that new framework, not accredited. So adapted binary accredited in two ways they can take awaiting accreditation that is on the threshold of uh, accreditation and not accredited far below the standards of accreditation. Now next one is, next point, first point is this, binary accreditation, second one. Encourage accredited institutions to raise their bar, evolve in depth and in breadth. That means here I have four programs in depth. I can increase them to 10 programs. I can offer 10 programs. And breadth is I my institution is majorly focusing on teaching. I may increase my breadth towards uh, increasing number of uh, research associations and research papers so either we can uh, increase our level towards depth or in breadth in disciplines from level one to level four so level one to level four we can uh, raise our bar and all these come under institutions for national excellence and then once it, it reaches level four then we can compete and go for institutions of global excellence for multidisciplinary research and education. So this is the second one, multi-level accreditation, multi-level, leveled accreditation. Encourage accredited institutions to raise their bar gradually to level one to level four of institutions of national excellence moving up as they evolve in depth in their disciplines or in breadth in their disciplines. Encourage accredited institutions to raise their bar towards level five institutions of global excellence for multidisciplinary research and education as envisioned in NEP 2020. This classification could be a necessary condition for graded auto uh, autonomy. Next thing, next third point is enable choice based ranking system for diverse stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders of uh, uh, our educational institutions? Students, funding agencies, uh, industries like that. So there should be a mechanism to enable choice based ranking system for these kinds of diversified stakeholders, potential users like students, funding agencies, industries who we consider as stakeholders could be enabled to make a more informed choice for studies 
research and consultancies that means they should be able to decide by looking at this accreditation factors by looking at the quality of the institutions for their research for their research and for their studies and consultancy so what's this inbuilt tools need to be provided to process and refine the both above vectored scores that are based on gross parameters with user specific weightages and selectable parameters so in order to achieve this they should they should adhere to certain selected parameters and the weightages given to them fourth point is amalgamate program accreditation and institution that means program accreditation should be done separately and institution accreditation should be done considering their interdependencies and then evolve a composite assessment system with the due compliance to the accepted conditions of the washington accord what is this washington accord actually you have different types of accords like washington accord sydney accord dublin accord like that the washington accord is an international accreditation agreement for undergraduate professional engineering academic degrees and postgraduate professional engineering academic degrees between the bodies responsible for accreditation in its signatory countries the first signatories as of january 2024 latest latest um, uh, signatories are all these uh, japan korea malaysia and so on you, you can find india also here okay so according to this washington accord amalgamating amalgamation of program accreditation and institution accreditation together with evolving towards composite assessment was included next parameters and threshold levels for the scores on institutional assessment and each of the programmatic domain assessment may be specified in the upcoming manuals sops and benchmarks a standardized list of programmatic domains may be drawn up the composite assessment may be provided as a composite table for each hei or an infographic for example you can make use of star plots star plots a sequence of uh, equiangular spokes representing a major programmatic domains their length proportional to the rating of each domain if the domain for that is that length of that particular spoke of uh, star will be more with a central core circle scaled to the institutional base in this composite assessment it is possible that a typical hei may get high scores for a few groups and relatively low for the rest of the domains accreditation scores are paramount than the rankings so whenever data is collected on more than one variable i told you that this programmatic and then uh, institutional assessment must be taken as composite assessment no so here we will consider multiple variables when data is collected on more than one variable star charts are used to illustrate and represent the multivariate data star plots assist in identifying the dominant variable we are able to identify which is the dominant variable in that identifying similar observations and detecting outliers in that each of the variable measures some property of the observations and such plots assist in assessing the relative values of a single data point so based on the parameters and the values of the parameters the length of the spores of uh, star see look at this star all are equal in length so if this is the predominant variable then this fork will be more so this is how you can make use of star according to this composite assessment right so this in turn facilitates finding and locating the comparable and dissimilar points the length of the equiangular spokes which reflect an observations value on the variables is proportional to the magnitude of the variable at that point in relation to the variable's maximum data point all the data points are connected by a line to represent the plot of course this is technical the graphical representation of what we have discussed in the fourth point the major thing what we have to understand here is that amalgamation of program accreditation and institution accreditation considering their interdependency and evolving towards composite assessment system 
based on washington accord that was about fourth point fifth point is mentor the institutions falling fall below the standards of accreditation so this is uh, another point to be which is uh, mostly new framework HCIs from the accredited group may be encouraged to become mentors with the suitable credit given during their re-accreditation. Suppose some institutions have been accredited, then among them they can be made as mentors and by giving suitable credit means here uh, if they act as mentors, if certain particular uh, institution act as mentor to some other institution for guidance of uh, accreditation then some credits can be given to these mentoring institutions thereby encouraging mentoring system and making all other institutions also to come forward to participate in NAC. Sixth point is simplify the accreditation process especially for the first cycle and bring down periodicity for re-accreditation to six years existing stipulation for annual review approvals by AICT for technical education programs in particular may be eliminated if the scope of the program does not alter significantly you see here simplify the accreditation process especially for the first cycle first cycle we, we are afraid to get into NAC process but this is considered so Simplification of first cycle process is being taken into consideration and periodicity of reaccreditation may be brought down from five years. Once the HA gets accredited in the first cycle, the existing stipulation for annual approvals that is followed by AICT and online process now may be eliminated, provided that the scope of the program, that means content of the program, number of seats of the program does not alter significantly. So now for engineering colleges every year they have to go for AICT approval that could that is to be eliminated. the allowable bands may be specified further considering that the NEP 2020 envisions that the undergraduate degree will be of either three or four year duration with multiple exit options within this period and UGC has already taken steps for implementation of these provisions the committee decided that Six years shall be the mandatory defined periodicity for institution accreditation cycle. However, flexibility needs to be ensured in the system so that an institution can opt for reaccreditation at any point of time based upon their specific levels of preparedness. Even this flexibility is also given. But the point here you need to note that EIC first cycle is simplified than the present one. Next. AICT every year online submission and approval is not required and as NEP is uh, introduced like uh, three year course, four year course, multiple entry and exit system, they have chosen uh, as periodicity for six years, still providing the flexibility for opting depending upon their uh, specific level of preparedness. Next, next point is include all HEIs and every program in the newly proposed assessment and accreditation system with due regard for their statutory dispensations. Here, for example, uh, IITs. Let me show you this. Look at this. Uh, this is CBIT, one college I have taken. I think you are able to see this. This is their uh, web, pa web page, first page of their website do you find NAC grade here it's, it's we are able to see NAC grade now now let me open IIT Kharagpur do you find any NAC grades here does it mean that IIT Kharagpur is uh, far less than CBIT not like that no? so till for the last few years it was not mandatory for all the institutions especially statutory dispenses like um, IITs they are 
they are not it's not compulsion for them to get into accreditation now you see recently i think you are all able to see this news from times of india 2023 in a first iit is to open doors to external agencies for grading previously how were they assessed peer group peer team that was the here nat is from they decided to involve these all institutions all kinds of institutions into nat that is about seventh point include all hais and every program in the newly proposed assessment and accreditation system with due record for their statutory dispenses by giving their own preferences by giving priority to them but still making them to include in this umbrella so reform nac to include iits assessed by institution type follow 3 year cycle education ministry panel this is the news about this inclusion of iits also into nac the process of encouraging iits to migrate from their internal peer review system to an appropriate national accreditation system is on the anvil next important everyone of the who acted as nirf iit qsc coordinator nac coordinator will be very happy with this point that we all know that one size does not fit all and for a fair selection everybody has the same exam please climb that tree all will have seven criteria maybe some metrics have been uh, changed and some marks weightages can be changed that means a small tree you can climb or a big tree you can climb that is the uh, difference everybody is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree till uh it lives it's a whole life believing that it's a stupid it's a albert einstein just to, to have a distraction from this so major junior so one size this boat is well so big for him it is too uh, fit for him okay yes now till now only three categories university autonomous affiliation the excellent point here is that consider the heterogeneity of hcis in the country categorize them based on their orientation vision and heritage or legacy and then formation from the hcis that are appropriate for their category rather than a one size fits all model in vogue currently that means the criteria here is orientation and vision that means is this institution research oriented institution or teaching oriented institution is the occasional institution or community engagement what is its major priority what is its vision so based on that suggested category of cis are multidisciplinary educational research intensive research intensive teaching intensive specialized streams may be offering by that institution occasional skill intensive community engagement and service many of the colleges will be focusing more on this kind of service and rural and remote location some colleges may be located at rural places remote location they can't have the same criteria and same key levels as were given to all other affiliated colleges so this is the best thing best point to be noted in the new framework it depends upon the orientation and vision of the higher education institution those were categorized and they can be accredited and also heritage and legacy is also considered that means is it a old institution or just established institution or is it a new institution or upcoming institution like that more number of categories may be added as required till now sop benchmarks manual was not released we are talking about the reforms which are given in dr radha krishnan's report which is given on january 27 2024 we will be knowing much about all these implementation details next point is accredited with appropriate consideration of inputs processes outcomes and impact previously input based 
of course outcome based you are calling what do you mean by that outcome in previous thing that number of students going for higher education number of students uh, acting as entrepreneurs number of students going for employment that was considered as outcome but the input we are giving is the details about the number of students number of entrepreneurs and number of employees from our college from our institution so accredited with appropriate consideration of inputs process they followed outcomes obtained and in fact across different attributes there is a, a big table as additional information i can provide you with this i'll show you at the end of this session so how this inputs process outcomes and in uh, in fact were defined is given in the report i'll be showing you that across different attributes of hei instead of more input centric a framework for parameterizing input out process outcomes and impact has been suggested linking parameters to essential variables and assigning weightages business logistics for the varied purposes of approval accreditation and scoring or ranking is a working progress actually start mid long stages of work is going on still ninth point is accredited with two consideration for input processes outcomes and impact across different attributes of hei encompassing curriculum all these are to be considered taken into consideration for input process outcome impact also curriculum faculty resources available teaching and learning research and innovation co curricular and extra curricular activities community engagement green initiatives governance and administration infrastructure development financial resources and management so for all these input process outcome impact are considered and i'll show you that document right this is what i got this is given in the appendix of the report for curriculum for faculty research input process outcome input this is what is given but still it needs lot of uh, sot benchmarks given to us input process outcomes impact for different attributes of hei the parameters and related variables in current use by iict nac nba to a large extent by nirf are largely they are all input centric hence the framework for addressing the four elements of each attribute is addressed linking applicable parameters and essential variables involves evolving the harmonized linked explicitly with the inputs process outcomes and impact pertaining to each of the eight or more attributes for each category of hei identifying a simplified superset of the essential variables that would be truly indicative of such parameters and assessing assigning weightages for the varied purposes of approval accreditation and ranking you see who are taking into account not merely the input but also the process outcome and impact of various variables various factors now depending upon how they will be used either for nirf or for nac or for iisa or for aict mb like that uh, we will assign weightages to them and we will take the parameters for the purposes of approval accreditation and ranking so this still the required actions are underway in mission mode by respect to this point what am i going to find the demonstration to collect the two set of data for the 
achieve the purpose for approval accreditation ranking with an inbuilt design for collateral cross checking to check authenticity of data and in conjunction with it introduce maximally the technology driven modern systems to replace the existing manual or hybrid systems of assessment and accreditation thereby minimizing subjectivity and enhancing transparency and credibility see by collecting simple set of data from external it can be used for several and still they have they have that uh, collateral cross checking uh, design also built in design also to check the authenticity of the data and mostly they are focusing on technology driven modern system than the existing manual or hybrid system of assessment 11th point is one data one platform all these unified illustration tool and then considering of uh, Institutions have uh, based upon everything, based upon their orientation and vision or heritage. So uh, all these they are considering to bring one data platform, one nation, one data platform may be upgraded to a robust architecture to provide adequate access control and security features. Intention of harmonizing data with the view quality checks into a single format. with the applicable essential variables single point entry data entry by hcs with the provision of yearly updates enabling ease of doing business for hcs this and robust data management scheme with business logics for the varied purposes of approval accreditation and scoring or ranking handling of collateral data INDA Gati Shakti Future Digital Campus of HCI like Samard the Swayam 2.0 as well as Aishe Portal Digital Locker and uh, Academic Bank of Kerala all all this information about uh, higher education institutions which are um, operating independently so instead of that having a centralized secure database is much more required now the development of the one nation one data portal aims at establishing a unified data architecture for augmenting the efficiency and transparency of the approval and accreditation and ranking process of higher education institutions in the country so feasibility of upgrading of one nation one data platform has been ascertained this also the required actions are in underway in mission mode first point is trust institutions along with significant penalty for wrong doings or submissions we may think that who will see the data and uh, we should not give wrong data so there will be a severe punishment on the huge penalty include uh, incurred to them and ensure public disclosure of relevant data by hcs to enhance the overall process credibility and last point 13th point initiate a robust outreach mechanism in tandem with effective methods of hand holding with the potential entrants which is the large majority now they are uh, entrants into this um, nac where the aim should be to facilitate all hcis in the country towards joining the process of accreditation and ranking at the earliest this will be an important requirement for the successful implementation of nep 2020 so the outcome of new nac framework implementation is by implementing all the recommendations till now we watch whichever we have discussed comprehensively before the end of 2024 the indian higher education system will be making a transformation enhancing the quality and credibility of indian institutions and thereby contributing to the socio economic leadership of india 
as part of amrit kal vision of honorable prime minister shri narendra modi the executive committee of nac in its 104th meeting held on 27th january 2024 decided the following talking about the implementation nac said the recommendation reforms shall be implemented in two stages in the first stage the binary accreditation will be implemented in the next four months and no new applications will be accepted as per the present methodology as there after institutions that have already applied and are applying in the next four months shall have the option to either go by the present process or by the new methodology of binary accreditation the maturity based graded levels will be implemented by december 2024 so it is said that binary multi level accreditation for institutions in nac reforms implementation in two stages nac executive committee decided to implement this is the news and india to be the most developed nation by 2047 if higher education leveraged aicd chairman according to him so outcome of the session till now we have tied to a through introductory part quality assessment of hcis in india quality assessment of hcis in the world global best practices net hci quality new nac framework 13 points and additional material which ever i have shown you wrapping up is mainly binary accreditation is involved accredited or not accredited maturity based level 1 to 4 national level excellence fifth one level 5 for global level excellence and one nation one day and uh, i thank this is acknowledgement i thank dr v salif our call act academy team for giving me this opportunity for collaborating with them to conduct this uh, event and also giving me chance to act as resource person all the participants and all our college faculty these are the references i followed so for any queries for any events on nac iisa nirf ipr oer feel free to contact or mail to this thank you any questions can you please share your email id once again Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to know when uh, this new uh, level of NAC assessment will be effective. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, this uh, new level of NAC assessment will be effective from which year? By December twenty twenty four. Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, so it, that notification will be given. Ah, uh, yes, it uh, will be given. I, I'll show you that future stages also. Just a minute. Ma'am, uh, please share your email ID in the chat. Ah, uh, sure. I will show you future. Yes, further work. Stage one, they are planning. Madam, start. Start. let me ask you one thing. Yes. Okay, ma'am, it has been told that from in the existing structure, we can apply up to four months. So, ha have we been precisely told up to which period we can apply in the existing structure? Four months. Which four months you are asking, Nama? Ma'am, it is told that in the for the existing NAC accreditation process, institutions have to apply within four months. That is how it yes. has been mentioned. No, no. So up to uh, which period? April, 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 April. But not exact month is not given. They will okay. be announcing, ma'am. So as okay. of now, it is set on January twenty twenty four, and they told four months. So up to April, they may be accepting. but they will release uh, i'll show you the nac portal they will be releasing the notice will there be more clarity on that ma'am ah uh, sure surely they will give but as of now they told up to 4 months means uh, up to april they will be accepting present uh, okay. uh, accepting uh, and they have we have the option for uh, asking either to go for uh, new 
accreditation or old one so this is the afterwards yes afterwards will there be option ma'am no no must go for uh, binary so like this they will be giving us the public notices i think you are able to see this uh, announcements mm. namma okay ma'am i have a personalized query for yeah. our institution the due date is 9th august 2024 Okay. So, so in that case, actually we thought of, I uh, mean, submitting the SSR and IAQA in the I next see. July. Include, I mean, in including this uh, current academic year, twenty three, twenty four also. But as per the present system, uh, we won't be able to include the current academic year if we go by April, right, ma'am? Yes. So in that okay. case, do you have any advice to us? If do we have to go? Re- the ssr draft is ready go ahead or else uh, if the draft is not ready and if you are not prepared with iiqa so four months will be better to move on to binary accreditation okay that depends upon the level of preparation of ssr all right all right all right <laughs> so, so ma'am if we are applying in uh, within the april can we include this year 23 24 for the last completed 5 years 23 24 for you can't include okay okay all right okay ma'am thank you right ma'am shahina thank you ma'am the session was really informative and you have presented it well thank you krishnaveni madam for the informative session that you have delivered So let me introduce Professor Saudamani Menon, uh, Department of Education, retired professor, Department of Education, Sastra University, Tanjore, for the felicitation address. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, Professor Saudamani Menon. I am very happy to introduce you, ma'am. Uh, the mad- madam has uh, more than thirty years of experience in the field of education as PhD research guide, uh, college principal. Uh, university head professor across prominent universities of india she is the associate member of local inquiry selection admission and examination committees of mumbai university and sndt university she is acting she is acting as associate member of ad hoc board of studies in educational technology sndt university and justice dev committee she is the member a coordinator in the nctt committee and have visited 55 institutions across india she has accomplished educational research through pgdm a study on teacher educators and pre service teachers perception towards the common entrance test of bed program under dr abuja mayer from sndt university she has completed her mphil from mumbai university and pursued her phd on the topic in search of emotional intelligence profiles of graduate student teachers under the guidance of dr c g d lima director general of rizvi institute of management studies bandra mumbai madam has published many research papers in reputed journals so we are very happy uh, ma'am uh, that you have supported our college and our uh, uh, faculty very well and uh, over to you madam thank you very much hello good evening to all my dear uh, krishnaveni madam and uh, anil and the principal sir to everybody my heartfelt heartful uh, pleasure and happiness and uh, i have i have uh, accredited about 55 institution all over india as a nac member as a nac coordinator so there when i was accrediting all these things were i mean uh, i mean i was seeing and i were doing it now to listen to somebody i mean that the full each one college that whatever i see no that is coming in front of me so a good nostalgia means what are the things i have seen how we are credited how we are given the great points all the things comes fresh to my mind 
I'm very, very happy to be here. Normally, I come and I go, and then I come back in. Today, I was here full time. I mean, I wanted to listen. I wanted to update my knowledge. So I was here. So thank you very much for uh, making me sustaining into this uh, session. So my uh, now role, a very small role to felicitate felicitation address. Dear ladies and gentlemen, those who are participated for today's session, about uh, 100, 115 people were there. Today we are here to explore the new dynamics of NAC, which is the need of our. And this session, I surely say that will help us to success and this will be a milestone to our institutions. It is indeed a pleasure uh, and an honor to extend my warmest congratulations to all the experts who were rendered remarkable knowledge for us. It's marvelous, amazing knowledge. And the way you presented, both the, both the presenters, they were presented so beautifully. First and foremost, let me acknowledge the hard work, determination, dedication that ACT Academy and SKR and SKR GCW Kadapa, who has put their endeavors to make this session so beautiful. It is not so easy. I know that going to the class with a chalk or a, with a uh, something, you know, uh, what you call that teaching aids is very easy. But we know as teachers in sitting in front of a laptop and to show the PPT and to show it, to explain it, it's very difficult because we are not facing each one. We are maybe we are seeing the pictures, the photograph of the people who are there, but you know the interaction between that one. Otherwise, we can understand what we are saying and uh, whether they are audible, whether they are understanding. That you know we can we can understand to their body language, facial expressions. Now here it is like that. Just we are talking and in our uh, conscious subconscious oh my god whether i'm i am proceeding in the proper way or not that fear that sort of thinking will be there and every time we will not be able if you say that whether you understood and to get the answer from the participants is very difficult somebody will say somebody will not be saying but in the open class when we are teaching whether it is 200 students or 300 students it's so easy to handle but here uh, Veni, Madam, and that uh, uh, other uh, presenter, both the both ladies, they have done it so beautifully. A big uh, hats off to you all, my dear uh, teachers. So well you have done it. At this age also, I thought it. I must also. I'm. I'm getting jealous. I wanted to compete with you all. I don't know whether I will be successful or not, but I will see to that. And so much you are inspired that motivations and you know the way you are you are explained, it's marvelous. So these their excellence, they have shown us that success is not handed out on a silver platter, but rather earned through sweat and countless hours of effort effort. It's not so easy, ma'am. So whatever you have done it is so beautiful and very, very appreciable. In addition to all this, our academy, that is ACT Academy, is always a strong advocate for giving back to the community the need. They're, they're understanding their need and they are giving. So those who are working in the ACT Academy, like my, my son, he is there, Sandoshji. And uh, other faculty members, they are all so beautiful. They are working very sincerely to make this program so beautiful, so, so easy and helpful. These making all the things which is required for the people, for the improvement of the institution, for the society, it is very, 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 very 
uh, appreciable. In conclusion, I would like to say that my heart full of congratulations and extend my heartfelt facilitations to this extraordinary two eminent presenters for their hard work and which made made very so simple things and the, it will be it will straight go to our uh, storage place to our brain many of you all continue and all you should continue to shine and accomplish great things in the future also so we expect your coordination cooperation and help to make our academy a uh, excellent one act academy to be the 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 best academy in our country thank you very much for your all participants for your patient hearing and interactions and uh, your dedication thank you very much god bless you all we will meet again for the next sessions next coming up sessions thank you very much have a nice wonderful days now we come to the end of